so we all know that proteins are the important building blocks of our body and what are these proteins made up of they are made up of amino acids now through diet we get proteins these proteins are further broken down okay and this protein degradation is called as proteolysis through this body gets the amino acids there are two types of amino acids essential amino acids and non essential amino acids now what are essential amino acids essential amino acids are the ones which are required by the body these are required by the body but they are not present in our body and thus we can uh, provide them through the diet or through food okay and what are these non essential amino acids non essential amino acids are the one which are generally synthesized in the body okay and all these amino acids they have their own uh, functions now what are the various functions of the amino acids we know we know that uh, amino acids they act as precursors okay they act as precursors for the synthesis of uh many biologically important compounds like uh, melanin serotonin and uh, certain amino acids they are also uh, directly acting as neurotransmitters like uh, glycine aspartate glutamate etc okay so they act as neurotransmitters so we require these amino acids and later when these amino acids are absorbed okay when they are absorbed in the intestine what happens they enter they enter in the body's amino acid pool okay yes our body has amino acid pool now this is the completely hypothetical concept there is no uh, specific uh, or separate compartment which is called as amino acid pool in the body but this amino acid pool uh, represents okay it represents the uh, approximately 100 grams of free amino acids in the body okay 100 grams of free amino acids of the body uh, are referred as the amino acid pool now among these you know uh, the 50% of among these 50% is glutamate and glutamine glutamate and glutamine and 10% are the essential amino acids and rest are the non essential amino acids okay so this was all about amino acids so now can i say that when i have to study the topic of protein metabolism that means i am studying the metabolism of amino acids okay so in this particular video we are understanding the amino acids metabolism now in this amino acid metabolism there are two important steps one is trans amination and the second step is deamination okay now what is this trans amination as the name suggest there is 
transfer of the amino group whereas deamination there is removal of the amino group now the carbon skeleton of the amino acid part this carbon skeleton gets converted into the keto acid group and it further takes part in the transamination step okay whereas the amino group of the amino acids this removes the ammonia and then it gets converted into urea which is the end product of the amino acid metabolism so let us learn more about this and uh, just last point before we proceed uh, these two steps that is transamination and deamination they occur simultaneously and uh, thus we can also call it as transdeamination where glutamate is the central molecule glutamate is considered as the central molecule now in this transamination process we know that there is transfer of an amino group so from this am uh, amino acid if i transfer this amino group to somewhere else and instead of this amino group if i bring this double bond o then that particular structural form we call it as keto acid okay and that is what is happening over here the amino group is getting transferred somewhere else and at this place there is double bond o so amino acid is getting converted into its respective keto acid form now where this amino group is going then this amino group is been taken up by the another keto acid see this is the another different keto acid so this amino group will be taken up by this keto acid and it will get converted into the respective amino acid form this is happening in transamination and this transamination doesn't happen by its own it requires the assistance it requires the help and that help is given by the enzymes now which enzymes those enzymes which help in transamination are called as transaminases and these transaminases they also don't work just by their own they also need help so they get help from plp which is the coenzyme okay so coenzyme plp helps transaminases to carry out the process of this transamination okay now this keto acid from which the amino uh, amino group has gone and it has been taken up by another keto acid now this keto acid may get amino group from somewhere else maybe from the transamination happening uh, simultaneously around it and it may get converted back to its respective amino acid form therefore we say that transamination is reversible okay and the uh, amino group liberated over here is only transferred okay it is not liberated it is only transferred so if we see mechanism of transamination okay taking the example of alanine now this amino group is been taken up okay by the pyridoxal phosphate now what is this pyridoxal phosphate it is the coenzyme it is helping transaminases okay this coenzyme is helping the enzyme which enzyme 
transaminases now what is the role of transaminase transaminases are responsible for transamination means for transferring this amino group so for transferring this amino group first the amino group will be taken up by this pyridoxal phosphate okay that is plp it is taken up by this and at this place if you see the double bond o has come up and the alanine has been converted into its pyruvate form okay now this plp has got the amino group but it doesn't want this amino group so this amino group it will give away to the another keto acid which is present in the vicinity for example alpha ketoglutarate okay and this after taking up this amino group that gets converted into glutamate okay so specific transaminases exist for each pair of amino and keto acids however only two namely aspartate transaminase and alanine transaminase they make a significant contribution for transamination and this transamination process is important for the redistribution of amino groups and production of non essential amino acids it also involves both catabolism and anabolism of amino acids transamination diverts the excess amino acids towards energy generation the amino acids undergo transamination to finally concentrate nitrogen in glutamate and the glutamate is the only amino acid that undergoes oxidative deamination to a significant extent to liberate free ammonia for urea synthesis okay which is the end product of this amino acid metabolism now the question is do all amino acids undergo transamination yes almost all amino acids undergo transamination except these four except lysine threonine proline and hydroxyproline all other amino acids they undergo transamination now if you see the various structures of amino acids ranging from glycine alanine to aspartate glutamate proline lysine cysteine tryptophan if you see all these structures they have one amino group with them and there are certain amino acids like ornithine where not only at alpha position but at delta position also we have amino group so transamination is not restricted to alpha groups only but delta amino group of ornithine is also transaminated